everyone and welcome back to my Virtues Last Rewards Let's Play. The last time we played the Amber Dex game and then we allied with Fi and she betrayed us and then was angry at us and then we were at a stopping point and couldn't continue. And then I betrayed her and then that was a bad ending. And then we went back to the first part and then she, she was mad at me because I betrayed her even though I, haven't, I didn't betray her yet at that point, whatever. And now we want to talk about how they do know stuff about different timelines. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I agree. There's something else we need to do too, though. Find the number two bomb. Exactly. So we should get going. I'm pretty sure the bomb isn't in here. There's nowhere to hide it. So... You're saying we should go somewhere else? Yeah. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Well, come on, don't just stand there. We need to get a move on. Okay, okay. Without waiting for a reply, she turned and started towards one of the exits. I followed. Oh man. How can these people even like know where they're going? I feel like I would- If I was in this warehouse, I'd be like, lost. Constantly. I know, Dogman. Archives. Archives. The archives. Good place to hide a bomb. Now where the hell do we start looking? I doubt it really matters. If it's here, we'll find it eventually. So what about that Jupiter stuff? We can talk while we look. Now get started. Mean. I turned to a corner of the room and began to look while Fi spoke. I'll start with the conclusion I've come to. Our consciousnesses seem to be able to jump through time. No, sorry. Through time isn't really accurate. It's more like we move through worlds. Yeah. World? Yes. More like timelines. I don't mean physical planets in this case. I'm talking about a whole different universe, really. Parallel worlds. What? Do you know about the many worlds interpretation? Well, kind of. I think I've heard of it once or twice. Hmm. Oh well, I'll just explain it. Rant incoming. Let's say... Hmm. That's a thought. That's a thought. I don't care what it is, but could you move? Uh. Scratch your head, cross your arms, put your hands on your hips, anything? I had no idea what this was supposed to explain, but I did as she asked. I'm gonna scratch my head. Scratch, scratch. Hmm. You scratched your head just now, right? But you could have chosen to cross your arms or put your hands on your hips. Now, maybe there are other Sigmas in other worlds who did all of those things. All of these worlds and realities are branching off from one another. The choices you could have made branched off from the moment you decided what you were going to do just now. Every moment you make a decision, another universe branches off on and on into infinity. Each of those branches is an alternate world. A world where a version of you did something different. Da, da, da. Haven't you ever thought about what life would have been like if you'd made different choices? What if you'd gone to this high school instead of that one? What if you hadn't started a study group? What if you hadn't told that girl you liked her? What if? What if? But are those what ifs really just what ifs? Or are there other worlds out there where you did those things? Anyway, that's the many worlds interpretation in a nutshell. I've simplified it a lot. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Doesn't have to be human actions, though. I just used your actions to make the explanation easier to grasp. The actions of a cat, the flight of a bee, the movement of a microorganism, even fluctuations in air temperature. All these can change history. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second here. I'll let microorganisms, uh, microorganisms slide, but there's no way that air is conscious of anything. Can you say for sure that you are? What? All of your actions are caused by the cells in your brain. If we go down a little further, 
And you could say all of your actions are the result of atoms or electrons, or smaller particles we haven't even discovered yet. Are those atoms and electrons still you making a decision? At that level? How different are you from the air? I'd say not much. Human existence is just one part of reality. Falling in love is like a tulip blossoming. A tulip blossoming is like a tornado forming in South America. See what I'm saying? The only thing that really matters is the action of the most elementary particles of matter. That's where history happens. That's where universes branch out. That's a lot of universes. Hey, you stopped. Are you done with that shelf? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Well, keep looking while I talk. How familiar are you with quantum physics? Never mind, don't answer that. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll try and keep it simple for you. Hmm, let's see. Hey, hand me that box, will you? This one? Sure. I handed the box I'd been examining over to her. She set it down on the desk and opened the top. Also... Hmm. Ah, there's a stuffed lion over there. Perfect. He's part of Felide, too. What? With that, she grabbed the lion and tossed it in unceremoniously into the box. She also took a weight in a weight and an ink jar and put them in next to the lion. All right, everything's ready. Ready? Remember that book in the crew quarters about Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> yeah. It relates to all this stuff I've been talking about. Anyway, come look at the box. What about it? Looking for the. This will only take a minute. <laughs> now look. I shrugged and peered into the box. What do you see? Well, there's a stuffed lion. From now on, that's a cat. A living cat. This is important. Got it? Yeah, it's a cat meow. Oh, man. This again? Sorry. I can't help it. I find that hard to believe. Ugh, fine. Maybe I can just ignore it. I mean, why are you, like, so annoyed by this, but not by Zero's rabbit box? I swear. Her, what is rough? I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, what else do you see? A weight that's not even a pawn and a jar of ink. Right. Now the weight is going to be radioactive material, and the jar of ink is full of poisonous gas. What? I'm kidding out of you! Idiot. It's not really full of gas. This is just hypothetical. Imagine that it's full of gas. So, what's the weight? Radioactive material. And the jar of ink? It's full of poison gas. Exactly. Good work. Now, there's one other thing you need to know about the jar. If it's struck by any of the alpha particles the radioactive material emits, it'll break. These particles are emitted randomly but there's a 50% chance that one of them will come into contact with the jar over the course of an hour. So let's close the lid. And pretend an hour has passed. Here's the question. Is the cat inside of the box alive or dead? Well, both. You can't open the box to check. And you can't hit the box. Obviously, you can't shake it either. It's also been soundproofed. So the cat could be howling up a storm in there and you'd never know. Basically, you have no idea what's going on inside the box. Do you remember what happens if the alpha particles hit the jar? It breaks. It breaks, gas fills the box, the cat inhales it, and death will whisk her away. And what if the jar doesn't break? The cat lives to tell the tale. Haha. -ha. And what are the chances of either of those things happening? About 50%. Uh-huh. So, what's your answer? Is the cat alive or dead? I can't personally know. Then guess. It's not hard. Alive or dead? It's both. Um... I know it's both. The cat is... Pause for dramatic effect. Alive! Nope. You're wrong. It's dead? That's wrong too. Then what's the right answer? The answer is that it's in a state where it is neither dead nor alive. 
What? How does that make any sense? It's an extrapolation of something we see at the atomic level. We don't know if an atom is spinning upward or downward until we measure it. Before it's measured, those two possibilities coexist. But as soon as the measurement is taken, obviously, only one possibility is the truth. That's what's happening with the alpha particles. Since we can't know when they were emitted or where, we only know the probability that they'll impact the jar. Because we can't observe anything that's happening in the box, that becomes the entire system. I like how this Trottles might surprise a visit. <laughs> My little let's play SMH. In other words, the box is like the atom. We don't know how the cat's life or death situation has resolved itself until we look at it. Until we do, it's just a bunch of possibilities. Do you get it? If the cat in the box is possibilities, then it's both alive and dead. Right. So, let's open the lid. And when we do, all the possibilities will collapse into a single truth. Da, 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 da. Meow. What a relief, huh? Looks like the cat's alive. Yay! Da, 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 da. Anyway. That's Schrodinger's cat. The many worlds interpretation is one theory for explaining that weirdness. So there's another world up there where this cat, uh, where this cat died. Yeah, that's the idea. That's a dot. That's a dot. Poor cat. Looks like that cat tick of yours cleared up. Yeah. Well, your story was pretty insane. Insane. You don't think so? Just the idea of something being alive and dead at the same time. And if the moment the lid is open determines whether or not the cat's dead, then it's almost like events in the future can determine the past. I mean, the cat doesn't die when you open the lid, so it must have already been dead. Exactly. You've experienced it, haven't you? What on earth are you talking about? Think back. Remember round two of the AB game? When you chose Betray, what was my vote? Ally. But what happened this time? I chose Ally and you chose Betray. Right. And both times, I put in my vote a full minute before the deadline. When did you push the button? Right before the deadline. I see. Well... That makes this a little easier to explain. If you chose Betray, then my vote was Ally. If you chose Ally, then my vote was Betray. But I made my choices a whole minute before you made yours. Don't you think that's strange? You do see what I'm saying, don't you? That my choice in the future altered your actions in the past? Yeah. From your perspective, there's no other way to interpret it. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Look at this die. I found it over there. Let me give you one last example. As she spoke, she tossed the die into the box and quickly shut the lid. All right, answer this question. What number is the die on? Um, six. It's probably six. Okay, I'm going to open the lid. Good Whoa. job. Crazy, man. You got it right. That was just a fluke. Was it? Huh? Let's think about what was going on before I opened the lid. What number was the die on? Six, of course. Haven't you been paying attention? The die is still a collection of atoms, isn't it? I don't think you can reasonably suggest that it was made of some different kind of matter. Wait, so you're saying that before you open the lid, the die was on all the numbers? Uh-huh. That's one way to look at it, at least. And then when you opened the lid, it was just one number? Or it might have become that number when you declared which one it was. Huh? Wait, what do you mean? Your choice in the future has an effect on the past. Okay, but what if I was wrong, though? Because, you know, sometimes you are wrong, and then it could have just been a two. That's crazy. Dot, dot. 
patat. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. We got a little off topic there, but I think I made my point. Yeah. Reality separates off into an infinite number of branches for each and every possibility. You and I seem to be able to jump from branch to branch. Of course, our bodies aren't doing the jumping. Our consciousnesses just sort of dive into other versions of ourselves in other worlds. Whoa. I think I get it now. That's how you knew my name, right? You jumped in from another world. That's how you knew all those other things you shouldn't have known. Yeah, that's the best I can figure out, at least. Unfortunately, it seems like we don't retain all our memories when we jump. Maybe we only remember particularly important things. I'm not sure how it works. But whatever the reason, it seems to be fairly limited. And often, we don't seem to remember jumping at all. Things will just sort of pop up. That's why when someone asks us how we know X, all we can think of to say is, I just knew. Yeah. What's causing this then? I don't remember ever doing this before, so why would it start now? If we knew that, I don't think we'd be having so much trouble. It's just... Just what? Well... Pretty sure it has to do with why we're locked up in here. There's no way this doesn't have something to do with whatever Zero Senior's trying to do. Why would he have left that Schrodinger's cat book in the crew quarters? Hmm. You aren't kidding, are you? Maybe this is some sort of huge Sch Schrodinger's cat experiment. And all nine of us are locked up inside the box right meow. And what if you've got it backwards? Backwards? We're outside of the box. And the rest of the world is inside. Then the moment we step out of this place... Yeah. We might be determining the history of the world outside. No way. I had a thousand other questions, but before I could open my mouth to ask them... Oh, good! There you are! Did something happen? Yes! We found it! They found it. Found what? What do you mean, what? What else could we find? <laughs> the bomb! The other antimatter bomb! The number two bomb is in the control room! Uh... Oh. But that's where we were. Hmm. Is this it? Because I was thinking that Alice was pretty suspicious since... Before that, the bombs were in all places where she was too. I mean, even though she was already going crazy when we found the third bomb, but she was technically there first. But I don't think she ever went into the control room. Although, do we know? I don't know, I don't have the map in my head, the, the thing, because she could have gone through the control room. But that doesn't make any sense, so. Hmm. Back to square one. Yeah. This is one of them, all right. And it's number two, apparently. Well, at least we found them all now. No. There could be more. Like Kay said, there might be a number four bomb out there. We have no way to know. Did you tell anyone else about this, Clover? Well, um, not really. But, uh, I wasn't the first person to find it. Who was? Kay and Luna? Hmm. After they found it, they came to the infirmary and told the rest of us. Who was in the infirmary? Everyone. Tenmyoji and Dio were there. So were Alice and Clark, of course. Although they were still asleep. So everyone who wasn't asleep knows about the bomb. I see. Yeah. There's nobody else here, though. Where'd they all go? Right after we came here to look at the bomb, they all left. They were going to go look for you two. What about Alice and Quark? They're the same. Still sleeping. We checked them out just to be sure, but they seemed fine. That's good. I and I looked at one another and let out a small sigh of relief. Oh, right. I checked everybody's bracelets when we were in the infirmary. Did you want to know what they were? 
took her only a moment to explain. Alice was green solo. And Quark was blue solo. Dio's bracelet made him a yellow pair. And Ted Mioji was a cyan pair. So, what are our options for groups? The next set of doors to open are going to be the white doors. That means we'll have to mix our colors so that we get white. Violate out what, would me what that would mean. Option A. Fire and Tenmyoji, Cyan, would pair up with me, red. K and D, yellow, would pair up with Quark, blue. Clover and Luna, magenta, would pair up with Alice, green. Huh? There's only one option? Yeah. Any other combinations don't make white. What about Alice and Quark? Luna said it's going to be a while until the red We'll just have to carry them. The secondary doors won't open without three bracelets. And if we can't open them... Yeah, we'll get penalized. Exactly. Don't worry about Alice. I'm on her team. Are you saying you can't carry her? Yeah. Oh. Well, I can get Luna to help me. Okay. True. I'm sure she'd be happy to help. What about Quark? He's on Kay's team. There shouldn't be any issues there. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Well, we still need to figure out what we're going to do about this bomb. Alice said we should be safe as long as it's not triggered with a remote. Maybe, but we can't just leave them here forever. I mean, if they go off, then everything in like a couple hundred kilometers is gonna get fried. Wait, a couple hundred kilometers? What are you talking about? That bomb should only have about as much explosive power as a ton of TNT. Which is nothing to sniff at, but that's nowhere near the kind of yield you're talking about. It could be. What if these bombs are just, like, the detonator? Oh. Oh. You mean there might be a bunch more anti-hydrogen around here somewhere? Yep, right over there. The reactor. Yeah. There are supposed to only be 18 antimatter reactors in the whole world. If that's one of them, then there's a lot of anti-hydrogen. How much is a lot? Three and a half kilograms. Three and a half? That's like 10,000 times more than Alice's 350 m m milligrams. If there really is that much, and if it does explode, then we would be looking at an explosion roughly 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Ooh, no, that's bad, man. That's... that's insane. Dot, 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 dot. Wait, Clover, how did you know that? Know what? That stuff about antimatter reactors. Um, well, that's, um... During my training, they... Training for what? Uh, my job? What job? Ah, oh, of course. I didn't realize waiters these days needed to memorize how many operational antimatter reactors there were worldwide. Or how much fuel each one of those reactors might be storing. You don't work at a cafe, do you? Did you hear about that from Alice? Yeah. Oh. Well, um... She's right then. And why are you using antimatter reactors at a cafe? That's uh what we call the coffee machines. What? Are you fucking with me? I'm telling you the truth. I work at a cafe. It just might um be a kind of fake job to divert attention. I think they call it a cover. What? Then what's your real job? I'm sorry. I really can't tell you anything else. Why not? It's classified. Classified by who? The government? The government? That's right. Alice said it was her job to eliminate enemies of the state or something. So you two do work together. Oh no! Check your bracelets! How much time do we have left? What are you talking about? How long until the doors open? Come on, quickly!
Damn. We were supposed to have met up five minutes ago. I'm heading back then. Remember, we're supposed to meet at the infirmary. You guys hurry back, okay? Bye! Hey! You haven't... Damn it. Man. And she's gone. Dot, 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 dot. Fine. She's right, you know. We need to get going. Hold on. I need to check something really quick. Uh, what? Dot, 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 dot. What did she check? He will never know. Unless they tell us, then we will know. Oh, there you are. You're late. What were you doing? Nothing. When we arrived, everyone else is already back. Brock and Alice hadn't left, of course. They were both sleeping soundly, and traces of the madness we'd seen earlier are long gone. Clover told us. You've seen the bomb in the control room. Yeah, with our own eyes. So what the hell should we do? That makes three bombs. Well, we have to do something. They're bombs, for God's sake. There's a quick and simple solution. Really? Remember what Alice said? There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. You see it? Right here, there's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. Then we can enter the password. So, if we have the password, we can deactivate them? Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. That's great and all, but we need that password input device she was talking about. I mean, we have that. Without that, we're still boned even if we did have the password. Not a problem. We've resolved that issue. Huh? Show them. I nodded and pulled it out of my pocket. That was in the safe in the control room. Exactly. We didn't have any idea what it was at first, but Fi figured it out. After Clover left, we tested it. Turned out I was right. It fit perfectly. Couldn't get it to do anything, though. We plugged in a couple random characters, but all we got was an error. Oh my god, why would you do that? What if it was like, oh yeah, you're wrong. Now we explode. Still, I'm sure this is the thing Alice was talking about. We just didn't have the right password. But why was it in the control room? Do you think Zero Senior put it here for us? That would suggest it was also Zero Senior who set up the bombs. Doesn't that seem odd, though? Zero Senior wants us to play the nonary game, right? So why would he set bombs? Maybe he wants to blow this whole place up if someone commits some crazy violation of the rules? That doesn't make sense. Our bracelets already have poison in them. If someone breaks a rule, all he has to do is activate their bracelet. Yeah, you're right. Well, whatever the case is, there's one thing we can be sure of. The person who set these bombs is one of us. Whether or not that person is also Zero Senior isn't particularly relevant at the moment. But what is relevant is that they know the deactivation password. If we can figure out who that person is and question them. We can get the password and turn the bombs off. Exactly. That would be my quick and easy method. So fess up. Which one of you set the bombs? Hmm. Not that I expect you to do that. So, we're going to be checking everyone. Checking us? Yes. Once they're set, the bombs are controlled by a remote. It stands to reason that whoever set them has that remote. So you're gonna search us for it? Yes. But... No buts. If you refuse, that implicates you. Do what I say and you'll be fine, assuming you are actually innocent. Understand? No reason to wait. Let's get started. Anyone want to volunteer to go first? No? Alright. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. 
Wait, huh? You only need to search one person. What? Why? Because I figured out who did it. I... I know who did it. The words were out of my mouth before I'd even realized I was saying them. How can you... There's no way. Yeah. I met Fai's gaze and nodded, then turned away. I know who set the bombs. That person. That person, you did it! The room was suddenly silent. The dot, the dot, the dot. The dot. To be continued. Damn! Did he, did he point at... Did he point at Phi? Did he point at... I mean... Who planted the bomb lock... Uh, lock number nine, not luck. Damn. Okay, this... <laughs> this time really can advance this any further. Man... Now the question is... Do we finish off this branch? Or do we go with completely different characters? The thing is, I don't... I don't remember the, the groups. Hmm... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't... I don't have a plan. I don't have a plan. I mean, the, the thing is, this implies that this will go, like, really far down, right? So, but this all already goes f further down, so will will this go even further down, or will this also go further down? So, I feel like you can't really predict which one will be the quote-unquote true ending. So, I think we're just gonna stick to this path. And, um, don't betray this time. Oh, I can't. I can't skip. Chromatic doors have opened. Do, do, do. No. No. <laughs> That's not okay. Why not? Because I hate Phi. Oh no, this is bad. Which door do you want then? The only other choices are A and C. I thought about it again. If I went with A, then Luna and I would end up paired with Clover, and we'd go through the green door. Oh wait, we didn't even go with the fire, I completely misremembered. On the other hand, if I choose C, we'd be going through the blue door with Alice. So which one did I want? I decided to go with... I mean, she won't ever go with us, right? So, okay, now I'm curious. What, what happens if I choose Alice? I'd like to take option C. I'll take Alice and the blue door. Are you dense? <laughs> what on earth makes you think I'd be willing to do that? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to see what you'd say. The There's no way in hell. I'm not going anywhere with you. Yeah, makes sense. You betrayed me in the last AP game. I don't pair up with assholes. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. Um, um, oh no, what are we going to do? We don't have much time left. Sigma, please, can't you reconsider? I didn't really have a choice. There was no way I'd be able to physically force Alice to come with me, at least not in less than a minute. Fine. In that case, we're gonna go... No, never mind, we did go with Phi. I'm... 
I'm, I'm so confused. I'll settle for option A. That's Clover and the green door. What's that? That's fine by me. Like I said before, there's something I want to talk to Alice about. Are you going to tell me what this thing is? That'll have to wait. Talk to me again on the other side. Oh! Now I'm curious. <laughs> so you're fine with this, Alice? With option A, I mean? Do whatever you want. I don't care. Are there any other objections? Okay, that's it then. Let's go, everybody. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. Nine, eight, seven. Six, five. We nodded quickly to one another and split up. Then Miyoji, Dio, and Alice headed towards the red door, while K, Quark, and Fi made their way towards the blue one. The gaping maw of the green door bounds in front of me as Clover, Luna, and I run towards it. I really want to go Two, into one, a door with K. Zero. You just seem so chill. Chromatic doors closing. I don't know if I'm gonna regret saying this, but he seems like he, he seems chill and nice. So. I do want one draw with them, but we we don't have any options so far for that. That's a rip, man. So we get the gardener? Huh? Treatment center? Huh? Is this a dead end? All three doors seem to be locked. <laughs> yeah. There's some kind of device over here. I wonder what it is. It looks like the thing next to the number nine door. Clover, try pulling that lever. Why do I have to do it? It might be dangerous. I was hoping you could just wrap your hands around it and give it a good jerk. It is kind of big, but I'm sure you can handle it. Just be gentle. Uh, this doesn't seem like appropriate workplace behavior. Indeed. You're kind of grossing me out. Yeah, you are being a creep. I know you probably still think of yourself as just a girl, but you have to become a woman some- You're not making it any better! Ta Why don't you do it? If you can't take it, then maybe look. <laughs> if you've done this before, you just start at the base and work your way up. Then give it a good tug once you get to the top. What? <laughs> what is wrong with you? If no you're idea. so desperate to give that lever a good time, why don't you do it yourself? True, man. Just leave me and Luna out of your sick fantasies, you creep. That a thought. That a thought. <laughs> Fine. But I won't like it. I sighed heavily and flipped the switch with as much languid disdain as I could manage. Sometimes I wonder what is wrong with, with him. Like, seriously, I'm like... Oh. Like what? One of the doors opened. Yeah, just the one on the left. Hmm, we might as well go through it. Yeah. Maybe we should try flipping it one more time, though. I think I could actually manage it with just one hand, Clover. Just do it really fast, it'll only take a second to just up and down once. <gasps> you are disgusting! <laughs> yeah, what is wrong with them, man? Archives. Ooh. Okay. Not the garden, the archives. I take that. There's ink. The bear. No, not bear. Lions, not bear. Huh? So this is the archives. That's what it said on the door after all, but. Yeah, I didn't really expect it to be so archivey. All these books and stuff everywhere. This really gives me PTSD to the fucking library in the first game. Where you just didn't know what kind of, like, there were books all over the place and you didn't know which ones were required to click so that you could advance. That was, that was horrible, honestly. Maybe we can find some clues here. I agree. That's a thought. That's a thought. <laughs> Alright, let's split up and have a look around. Alonzi! <laughs> They're just staring, They're like, okay, man. Just seek a way out. Just do it. Oh, there's the lion. Look at him. He's just chilling over there. Uh, 
It looks like these books are in Latin. Can you read it? No. I'm sorry. You uh, don't need to apologize for that. What about you, Clover? Oh god, um... Of course not! Okay. I didn't even mean to examine that. That looks very examinable too. But yeah, anyway. Those are the archives, but we're not gonna, like, uh, search them now. Can't look up. You see him, he's just chilling over here. We're not gonna do that now, we're gonna do that in the next episode. And, um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'm gonna see you guys the next time. Bye-bye!